Today we're going to be talking about Ines Alvarez. I have some examples of overlapping a video of the Arizona desert and some more things. So Ines Alvarez, as you can see, was born in Chihuahua, Mexico. She lives in Beaumont, Texas, and she was an abstract artist is an abstract artist and she is known for her bold colors and gold outlines. So when you talk about her inspiration, it's all about from where she grew up, where she was born, and also where she currently is living, which is the landscape of Texas. So she loves creating new colors and quote, she says, I don't know what colors I'm creating until they appear on the canvas or the wall. So I have a link on our slides for the website to take a look at more of her artwork, including here, her gallery is beautiful. So looking at this, we've already talked in class about what do you notice in her artwork? What stands out for you? What's something that you're interested in? Do you notice that she's got one or two cactuses? The sunset, sunrise. And how is your, your eyes, how is your brain, everything able to take in what is what? How does she allow you to see through her abstract, the landscape and the colors and what stands out for you? So what you'll notice is what we're gonna start with first is we are going to practice some sketches. I want you to come up with your own designs. So here, We'll start off with the first example of sketching, you know, creating our large cactus, adding a horizon line so we know where the sky and the ground meet, drawing, you know, the sun, the lines for the bottom of the page, as well as the sky. And we'll do that all in our first sketch. The second sketch, I want you to play with a little bit more of what do you want? I have a slide that I'm going to share with us of types of cactuses. So in here, they're all linked to my Google Drive, which you will be able to access of all these various different ways to draw different cacti. So you can always peek at that and come back and play with a new cactus. Do you want mountains in your background? What would you like? And finally, your third sketch, intermix. Do you want to have two cactuses? Do you want to have your sun in the middle on the right? Do you want it large? Do you want it small? whichever you feel. And from there, we're gonna be using our different mediums and beginning with adding in color. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to be working on our sketches. So when you look at your sketches, you want to take a look at what do we have here? What I would like us to do is we're gonna copy the example from above, step by step, in order to practice it in this one space, okay? So the first thing that you see in here is we're going to draw our nice large cactus. Again, sketches are just meant to be fluid. You're just quickly, you know, putting it down on the paper. We're not trying to make it perfect. We're just kind of looking at the shape. Mine's really skinny here, and that's fine, if you're able to see. What I might do is do this in a darker marker so you guys can see it a little bit better as I'm pushing it on here. So my lovely sketches look like this. All right, the next thing is we want to do our horizon line. So remember, our horizon line is where the ground and the sky meet. The next thing you're going to do is we're going to draw our half of the sun. So we talked about overlapping and we want to make sure that we're hiding parts of it. You can still tell that it's a sun, but what you don't see is the bottom half of it. As you're doing this, we're not focused on lots of detail. We're just trying to get the concept of what do we want to have on our sketch, our main paper when we're ready. The next thing we'll do is let's add our ground lines. So you can just break this up in many different ways. It's however it is that you feel and you like your ground to look. Remember, Ines Alvarez did, does a lot of abstract pieces. So it doesn't have to look very 
like much like the ground. You can have it broken up as choppy and big or little as you would like. The concept is, is we just want it to look different from the ground and the sky, just to have it a little easier to see the difference. What you can also do is add some lines in your sun, just break it up a little bit. And finally, we're gonna draw some wavy sky lines. So as you're doing it, don't go through your cactus, but go a little bit behind it. Remember the cactus is overlapping. It's right in the front. So you're not gonna see the sky through the cactus. And there you go. We filled up the entire page and broke it down. So my next one, I might want to play with a different concept. Maybe I want to have you know, my cactus be a different version of it. So I might not have it fully showing up on here. I'm taking a picture that's further away. So here's my cactus for this version, right? Now, if I wanted to go in, you know, this cactus could have these details, but we're not gonna really go in and do all those things or add flowers yet. But if it's something that you wanna remind yourself of, if you wanna have some pretend flowers and those texture mark and lines, you can easily go in and draw that for yourself, if that helps you. Same, you know, say this one, okay? All right. Same concept, we drew our large type of cacti in the front, and now we're gonna make our horizon line. So I might want my horizon line lower on this one. Then I want to think about where's my sun going? Well, it's about here, but I'm thinking maybe I want some mountains. You can add some mountains if you want. I have another mountain back here. And maybe I'm going to hide my sun back here. The next thing is I'm going to have my ground lines. So I'm going to make my ground lines. Again, bring them any way that you want. And finally, add your wavy skylines and lines in your sun. So now I've tried it this way. Your last sketch is going to be, what do you want to do? Are you enjoying this cactus? Is there another one that you wanna try? And then how are you going to change it? Did you like the idea of the mountains? Did you like the idea of just having the ground? Or do you want to have it where you have two of a cactus, one close and one far away, and having the ground and the skylines? So take this time now to create your own version in that last sketch. your three sketches done what I want you to do next is now take it to your final copy so on your paper here for your final copy make sure you put your name and your teacher code and don't forget your teacher code remember it's the grade that you're in are you in second grade? Are you in third grade? And then what is your teacher's first letter of their name? Once you're done, flip it over to the back. 
Now looking at your handout or your sketch sheet, what I want you to do is try to think about which one did you like the most? Is there one that stood out to you? What, did you feel better drawing to draw? It could be anything that you want. Or maybe you mix a little bit of all three in. So draw light until you get it right because you can always erase. And these are beautiful oopses and we're gonna be going over it with paint and also with oil pastel and a little bit of gold paint. So let's get started on this, this first part. Let's draw our cactus. Remember it's large, horizon, ground lines, skylines with our sun. Once you're done, let's talk about color. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with our yellow, and I'm also gonna give you a white because I'm gonna have us all work on our sun first. It's easier if we start breaking down our cactus and then go to our sun before we start working on our background colors. So I will also have us have a paper towel because if you take a look at my yellow here, it's a little dirty. So what you can do is all you do is you just kind of use the paper towel and you're going to kind of wipe off gently or draw it if you want to, to get some of that other extra color off of it. So see, I don't have to worry about having all of it. I just wanted it a little bit cleaner. I'm going to do the same thing to my white because I don't want to have any other colors to really mix. I want to have a nice, beautiful sun looking color. So usually when we add a color such as the white onto our drawing or painting, it's called a tint because you're tinting it to make it lighter. So you use black if you want to make colors darker in a shade and white to tint it to make it lighter. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use my yellow and I'm going to go in sections here and I'm gonna put my yellow down first in a couple places. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my white and now I'm gonna go over my yellow and you'll notice it's gonna make it a lighter yellow. Same thing here, nice and light. Just like that. Lastly, I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to go in and just do a normal yellow on top of it. Okay. 
as you can see, you can still see my pencil lines. And what we're going to do is use our certain paint on top of it a little bit later. So I'm just gonna extra highlight, push a little darker on here to make this as well. If you really want, I have another yellowish orange inside, but typically, you know, if you're going to use it, this is what would happen if I put it on top of it. If I had like this reddish one, it's gonna be a little darker. So as you can see, I don't know, I just think having just the one would be the best. So we'll stick with our yellow and we'll stick with our white. That way they blend really nice. Okay, so now that we've got our sun done, the next thing we're gonna do is take a look at our cactuses. With her cactuses, I want you to take out your pencil again. And what we're going to do is we want to break our cactus into different chunks and pieces. So you can have some straight lines or just break it up in different ways. You can have bigger areas or smaller areas. Once you have your cactuses broken up, now for me, I pushed a little harder because I'm gonna use some darker colors and I also want it to be easier for me to see what is happening and what's going on in the background. All right, so now that I have this, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab um, my different greens. I'm gonna choose one color green and color different sections around the cactus first. Then I'm gonna to switch to another one. So if there's only you know one green that you have at your table, what I recommend is we still have our yellow and we still have our white, and we'll also have a blue. So if you start playing with those, you're gonna make different colors, tints of green that will really look nice on your piece. So we're gonna grab our yellow and our white that we still have, and you're gonna have your green, is your newest color if you need to clean that off. And you'll also have a nice blue. So these will be the four colors that you'll be having and sharing at your table. Okay, so, like so as we were talking about with the yellow, what I want us to try is we are going to now add, in addition to the yellow, these three colors. So I have a light green, a dark green, and I have a blue. Kind of like an indigo because it's a little bit of a purplish blue. What I want us to do is on the back of our sketches, let's practice making some different shades of green. So just try, you know, what does your light green look like? We don't want to cover big areas, we're just testing. And this is a good thing if you ever get a new markers or you're making different paints, you always want to test how everything looks. And then we're going to take our green. And I want you to make two of them. So kind of do those up and down motions. Light green, dark green, here's my green again. I want you to take your blue and you're gonna put the blue on top of it. This is going to make a nice dark green. You can see the blue on top and then you can see the green here. Sometimes you could do the blue first and then put the green on top and blend it that way or you can do the green and put the blue on top. Completely up to you. You can also test out what does the light green look like when you add the blue on top of it. There's a different version. It's not as pretty as this one, but it does kind of give you that yellowish green um, color here. You can also look at what does this look like if I add yellow on top of it. very similar to our lighter green, right? 
So if I did, um, and that was with our dark, if I did the light green here and I put yellow on top of it, it's gonna just become a brighter looking yellowish green, right? Lastly, what does it look like when I do the white on it? So let's try that. I'm gonna go my dark green and I'm gonna take out my white and I'm gonna put the white on top of it. In this one, sometimes the white covers it a little too much. Maybe I pressed too much and it really got on there. And remember, sometimes it has some of the yellow still bits on it. So I'm just gonna clean it every once in a while to make it nice and fresh. All right, so using, let's try this again. I put the white and you can always go back and go, ah, eh, that's not the color I'm looking for. And you can redarken it. So here's the green, and again, it's really smooth. You don't have to worry about pushing too hard because that's how these break. But you can see that this green changed a little bit. So here's what the typical looks like. There's a little bit of white left on this part. And here's what it looks like here. So when you're working on your cactuses, and you'll see we'll have our colors and the greens on here, I want you to think about what you're going to do. Which versions are you happy with? What do you want to play with? So you can really work on, you know, looking at, okay, what did I do? You know, how did I create this? And recreate it on your paper. So like we were talking about, what I want you to do first is you're gonna use your green and just play with where you want it to go first. I'm gonna outline my cactus like this and then fill it. one cactus at a time. I do have in our bag another one. This is my lighter green. So, you know, you could create this own lighter green by, you know, putting the yellow on top. So that's an option if you don't have the lighter green. Or if somebody at your table is using it and you really want to use it, you can always try to make your own. So for the time now, I want you to go through and finish your cactuses and then we'll come back for what we're gonna do for the background. Do not do anything in the sky or your background um, ground layers. All you're doing your oil pastels in are your cactuses and the sun. That's all that we're doing. So let's continue.
once you're done with this part, you know, just kind of make sure you get some of those oil pastel pieces off. If your hands are dirty, we can use our baby wipes. Just wipe that down. Put these back in the bag because we're not going to use these anymore and organize them. And we'll move on to our next step. So for our next step, what we're going to do is I have something called my quick sticks. So I have them all organized, you know, in Roy Viv order. You'll see how I have them together. And this way it's just easier for us to put things back when we're done and grab what we need when we need. What I want you to start with first is your yellow. We're gonna work on the sky and then we can work on our way down and doing the background here. Finally, the last thing that we're gonna do for our piece is add some of our liquid gold tempura, okay? So my quick sticks, how do we use these? Well, these are actually paint. So just like a glue stick, they move up and down, but what I don't want to see is you to put a lot of the glue, I mean the glue, the paint up. Because otherwise when you push, it all goes gooey and it goes all down around, just like a glue stick. So you actually really want it just to be in there nice and tiny. This is brand new and you just slightly move it up when you need. It keeps your hands clean, it keeps us from wasting paint and a lot of great things. All right, so the first thing I want us to do is we're gonna create our color in the sky, okay? Our twilight cactus that we're working on. So I want you to try using it like a glue stick. Just paint in the first step. Nice and easy. I'm gonna continue it over here. If you end up covering over something else, that's fine too. Okay. Try your best to get all those spaces as much as you can. I'm gonna do my lowest one as well. Okay. All right. The next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to do this part with my yellow, the second line that I created. And as you notice, it's very smooth. You don't have to worry about moving it too much. You're probably asking me now, Ms. Holland, why am I doing two yellows? Well, we're going to blend. So when you're done, put the cap back on, listen to it snap. The next color you're gonna grab is an orange. So for this one, we're gonna blend. You're gonna put the orange on top of the yellow, just like you were doing. I do love seeing the colors blending like this. It's very pretty. And don't worry if it's not all the way together. I think it gives it a little bit of character when you do that. And I'm gonna do my orange up here again too. So you can see it's just slightly different. Try to fill in all those gaps. And looking at my orange, it's just a little bit, for me, I just want a little bit more. I'm gonna take my yellow, I'm gonna go back over it, and I'm just gonna lighten it up. I'm gonna make a lighter orange. That's what I'm looking for anyways. Okay. So now, and it's just, it's really not bad. It just comes off a little bit. What I want to show you is the cool thing about these quick sticks is if you touch it, the paint is dry. It takes 90 seconds for it to dry. Not too bad. And it's a fun way to paint as well. Our next color that we're gonna take out is our red. So let's take out our reds. 
and we're gonna do our red. What we're doing right now is we're slowly transitioning our sky. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do, because we don't want this to dry, is let's take our orange back out again, and we're going to blend the orange on top of the red. We're making a reddish orange right now. As you see, the next thing, we're gonna go to our red again. This time we're gonna leave it plain red. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do one of these colors probably thinking to go in this transition order, okay? So I'm gonna take my purple, I'm go in this darker purple up here maybe. And then this one. If it's too pinkish for you, Go back to that purple because it's just gonna be a lighter purple and you could put this purple on top of it and it's just gonna be a little bit lighter than what you saw of the pink. my top part all figured out except for now I got to do my mountains right here so what I was thinking for my mountains is I might just kind of play with some of these cool you know these two cool colors here and play with those here and then in the very bottoms I'm gonna do my blues So once you've got your top done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work towards our bottom colors. So again, we're gonna do the blues. So this time, we're gonna take out our two different blues. Here are our two blues and then our white. And that's what we're gonna be playing with for this bottom part. So I'm gonna fill in my bottom area using these blues. So when you have your gold paint, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a little, you know, um, I'll have our paper ready for us to hit, use our gold paint on at our table. We're gonna all try to do this together. So here's our gold paint. You're gonna use your paintbrush and you're gonna dip it lightly. So remember, you don't wanna have it go all the way up because you wanna be in control. 
And what I want you to do is you're going to try to draw on your painting exactly where your pencil lines were. So we're gonna re-divide everything that you originally had and you can easily see where it was. Don't worry if it's not as dark, the gold showing up. You can go nice and slow, make it nice and thick. And recover it all. 